Game 5 of 2005 would be an ESPN nationally televised top 10 showdown as 5th ranked Georgia visited Neyland Stadium to face 8th rated Tennessee. Locking their arms in a show of unity, the Bulldogs were prepared for another hard-hitting SEC showdown. The game was scoreless late in the first quarter when the Dogs began a long march down the field. Shockley going to come back and look and fire to a man open. And it is caught complete on the 32 by Milner, the tight end near the sideline. But it'll be a first down. He takes the snap high and looks. He's going to fire. It's complete to Massacre on the 15 down to the 10. Massacre broke in the zone right in the middle. And Shock going to give it to Brown outside the tackle. He drives close to the goal line, very close to the goal line. That's a big first down. Fullback Brandon Sutherland would cap the 83-yard drive with his first career touchdown. And we hand it off to the fullback, and I think he got it in there outside the tackle. Sutherland went off left tackle. Behind the tight end, who went in motion slowly to that side. Sutherland crawled in that left tackle. Well, we got the first six points. Leading 7 to nothing, Georgia again got big plays from the special team. Hunter Cordelia Kelso kept Tennessee pinned deep in its own territory. And the snap is good, and the kick high spiral. Tennessee waves fair catch. It hits on the 10, and we catch the ball around the 2. Somebody caught the ball, and it's Gilliam, Mike Gilliam. Late in the first half, the Volunteers were driving for a potential tying score when senior cornerback Demario Minter came up with his first career interception. Crossing backs up, fires, and we intercepted a call in the end zone. Somebody say to say or Minter got up in the air, intercepted facing the quarterback and landed on his back, and the receiver was behind him about three or four yards. The defense continued to punish Volunteers quarterback Rick Lawson and set up another scoring opportunity with a turnover. Lawson looking at a four-man line. He's back to pass again. A man's coming on him. He fumbled. The ball is on the grass. We go for it. They go for it down on the 27. Lawson dropped it. We had a guy land right on the ball. We got the ball with 84 seconds left to go. D.J. Shockley and the Georgia offense would not let the opportunity pass without adding to the lead. Tight end Leonard Pope had two big receptions, and the field goal unit showed it was ready in a pinch. Shockley takes it and looks, looks, fires over the middle to Pope, the big tight end, and they finally get him down around the eight-yard line. He curled running left to right and came down over the ten. We only got seconds, and the two sticks it up. And I think the kick is good. It is. He got it in there just as the clock was going to run out for the half. Leading 10 to nothing, Georgia went on a five-and-a-half-minute drive early in the third quarter with D.J. Shockley again keying the drive. Shockley going back, looking. Goes. There's a man. And there's a flag down and a catch by Pope backwards inside down around the 13. That set up a brand to two field goal and a 13 to nothing Bulldogs lead. Tennessee did manage a touchdown after an interception return to the Georgia one-yard line. But the Dogs' defense continued to harass the Volunteers. Safety Greg Blue had a team-high 14 tackles, while linebacker Jarvis Jackson and cornerback Paul Oliver helped shut down the ball's rushing attack, which managed only 48 yards. Five minutes into the fourth quarter, punter Gordon Ely Kelso would again pin Tennessee deep in its own territory. And the kick is going to hit on the two or three. And our man caught it on a bounce on the one-yard line. Oh, wow. The bounce came right up and hit a guy on the chest. The Georgia defense again was unrelenting and forced the Volunteers to go three and out. Thomas Flowers would then break the game open. Flowers takes it on his own 47 and sports off to their 45, to their 35, to their 25, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! The touchdown was the first of the sophomore's career and Georgia's first special team score of the season. It sparked the entire team on both sides of the ball. Quinton Moses would register his sixth quarterback sack of the season. And then the offensive line would take charge, with Thomas Brown gaining most of his team-high 94 rushing yards on the final scoring drive. Well, we give it to Brown, left tackle, 5 yards, Brown 10, Brown 15, 16, 17, and out of bounds. Brown just running, 
That's Brown and Sutherland. Shockley underneath. Going to give it to Brown and left guard. He's got five yards. There goes Brown. Touchdown. Somebody really opened a hole at left tackle. The celebration was soon on for the Bulldogs. The 27-14 victory was Mark Rick's third straight at Neyland Stadium and moved the Dogs to number four in the national rankings. I mean, you know that Tennessee is a great team, you know. If we want to, you know, succeed and go beyond, you know, try to win the SEC in the East or whatever, we knew we had to get past Tennessee, you know, of course, and that's what we did tonight. I mean, I, I love it. I love our defense. You know, they, they come to play every week, you know. They, they, they're they kind of guaranteed to, you know, get us the ball back with great field position or just get us the ball back, period. And, you know, them coming out playing the way they did is momentum for us to go out and keep playing hard.